Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Garvin coming to you from Chicago. As usual, we've got a good clip today. It's a TPO. I think we have a good clip. If we don't, it's Natalie's fault. Because she sent it to me. And I saw a little bit of it, and I, th I thought it was pretty good. It's, it's a TPO. There's a suspected squatter. I don't know. There may, there may be Threpple involvement. I don't know. I've, I haven't seen it yet. But we do have a problem. I don't have the ruling. And the ruling was given today. I have enough to know that there was a ruling given, but I don't have it. So if somebody has it, shut your hole and message it to me somehow. That's the plan. That's the plan. We, we, we got some time. If not, or if you just know what happened, save it till the end and then tell us all. I'll give you my thoughts either way. Whatever. It's still fun. It's still worth doing. Let's let, let's do it, shall we? I would think about it. He hasn't been in trouble since 89. He had some serious cases back at the time, but he's been good for a really long time. I'm sorry, man, but what happened in 1989? DUI. Okay. Mr. Kingmouth, we are on the record in case number 23-9195SB. Oh, I forgot. We've got our perpetual victim up in Traverse City. This this guy is my favorite. Thanks again to Kristen in Traverse City for sending this to me. <laughs> He's getting railroaded again. You know the deal. You are appearing for arraignment on an allegation of a bond violation. You're appearing with Mr. Jarbo, the defense attorney available through the Indigent Defense Council, uh, here to assist you with the arraignment. Mr. Jarbo, did you have opportunity to review allegations on the bond violation? Maybe the fail to appear with Mr. Kingma? Yes, we did review the bond violation. Uh, he's aware of what the violation is. Um, and he's prepared to admit to the violation. And it was positive PBT, is that right? Correct. It looks like there was a failure. Yes, the positive PBTs. Yes, correct. I'm consuming alcohol. So, Mr. Kingman. Go ahead. Thank you. So, you understand uh, if you choose to admit the violation, you're going to waive your right to a hearing. You'll waive your right. This gets good. To have Mr. King represent you at that hearing. So, you understand that. Yes, ma'am. I I would like to say I'm not doing really well at this, this keeping things on in check with myself. I took a TBI a long time back, and I just don't remember things. I could use some help. So yes, sir, you are a miserable failure at the at rehab. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you have the self awareness. <laughs> <laughs> to deal with it. Oh, so that's so something that thought, you should discuss with your attorney, and you can talk to the judge about it. The judge is going to ask you questions if you're going to admit the violation. So you're welcome to discuss uh, those issues with the judge. Um, it would surprise me if you can't remember not to drink, however. No, no. So I understand drink. about it. It's not. Right? It's not. I can't remember not to drink. <laughs> with my okay. TBI. I can't, I, I didn't think, it's hard to explain. Okay. It's, um, well, I, Judge, you don't understand. Somebody gave him Bailey's Irish cream. He was just trying to have some coffee, okay? I'm the dumb one. I'm an idiot. I drank, and then I no, walked right to that. Right, nobody is saying anything or, or passing any judgments about big issues here. I'm just letting you know that you're... Uh, yeah, we are. We're in court. We're, we're passing judgments. We're, we're, well, or at least making orders. <laughs> but I get your point, Judge. I get your point. Attorney, Mr. Kane, might be able to uh, provide you with resources or information, so you may want to discuss it with him. Uh, and the judge is going to ask you what happened, so you can also discuss that with I'm the aware. judge, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I am going to get the file to Judge Cooney. 
He has a trial this afternoon, so it won't be today that he'll be able to see you, but you will be remanded to jail until the time that the judge is able to accept your plea. Uh, and again, Mr. Kane uh, is your attorney, so you can also be in contact with him. I think you could call him from the jail uh, to see if he has information that would be helpful for you. Uh, I've been well. trying to, I have been trying to reach Mr. Kane for the last month. A, with no response, so calling him is not doing me any good. Maybe you should try once again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Holy wow. That's special. So let's talk about well, we need to get into the not your misgivings about this person being allowed into the house, though I do have a couple of other questions about that. How many people in total can live at this residence? Really four. It's a four bedroom, three full bath. Okay. Um, and so at one point it was the three of you and Mr. Rainey were the four. It was me and Mr. Rainey. And then Chandler came on board the 20th of May, and then Dexter on the 1st of June. Okay, so it was the four on the 1st of June, for example, it was all four of you in the four bedrooms. Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. And so, um, so tell me about the confrontation that came from that. Okay. Um, Ms. Dexter was supposed to move in on the 30th. She could not. Um, she was a no-show, no-call, and I took off from work for that. The first, she came um, late in the day and dropped in her furniture and clothing and then just disappeared. The um, second, Friday the 2nd, I had to go to work on my new supervisory job. And um, I explained to Mr. Rainey that I hadn't heard from our new tenant. So if she calls him, let her know that I will meet her after 6 p.m. I did just that. I came in the house on Friday the 2nd, about 6.30ish, and she was in the kitchen cooking. And, um, and she greeted me very abrasively. She, um, the, where's that key? Where's that key you said you had for me yesterday? And I'm like, ah. Oh. Um, oh, you know, welcome, you know, <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm like, I tried to give you the key yesterday and you were upset and said, no, I'll get a key from Steve, meaning Steve Rainey, right? And which I did. And I said, um, I was carrying my work laptop bag and some other items and very exhausted after being on my feet all day. I said, give me two minutes. I'm going to run up to my room. I'm sure it's up there somewhere. And my intentions were to come right back down. Um, and she just started ranting, and that's my exhibit one, is a voice recording. Um, she started ranting for about seven minutes straight about, can I use profanity? That old B, that old B, that old B, um, I'm gonna beat her A if she don't hurry up and uh, give me the key. I'm nice, but I ain't that nice, I'm a gangster. And she has the sweetest little, childlike animated voice at first i thought oh she's just letting off some steam to a family member and i know moving is stressful but then it got worse and then she got on the phone with rainy saying she was going to put her hands on me and i just thought i'm not going back down there you know i don't know this person you know from adam she might really hurt so i stayed in my no, room let me let me jump in real quick because i have a quick a question i need to clarify what is your relationship to this property I am um, a tenant. Um, okay, how long have you been living there? This time I've been living here since March. But, okay. but why, why are you the one in charge of distributing a key to a new tenant? Again, that's Steve Rainey. And again, there's, there's a more history to this, sir, that I really need to tell the story. I met Steve Rainey in January of 2021. At I that time, his ankle was... See, I, I'm going to use Ms. Fowler's words. She now is in a thruple. And not only does she choose to be in a thruple, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. Um, some type of accident. 
Um, he then had an ad online, reduced rent for cooking and cleaning and uh, uh, assisting me. Ma'am, I need you to I need you to stop right now and I need you to tell me how any of this is going to help me decide if Mr. Chandler or um, or Miss Dexter committed an act of violence against you, because I cannot for the life of me even Thank figure you. out a way to draw a path with my pen from where you are to where we need to be. I just wanted to paint history that, that Steve Rainey and I, the leaseholder of the property, have known each other since January of 2021. I stayed with him about seven, eight months during that time. And then I came back in, in March oh, of this Lord. year because he was looking for a roommate. He was actually reaching out to me. Hey, where are you? Come back. I miss you cooking, blah, blah, blah. Um, you love it here. And so I took him up on it once again, reduced rent. I had two bedrooms um, just like. Reduced rent. That's what they're calling it now. You know what I call it? A throuple. <laughs> Before, and a private bath because I'm an old person afraid of COVID. Okay, I'm just making all this up so I can use my throuple clip. I admit it. And then he, he decided he was going to interview Miss Dexter. Well, turns out Miss Dexter and Mr. Chandler had been friends or associates, and they brought her in. Yeah, As, um, I think it's just a zero. Um, I can't even sugarcoat it. Sex in, ex in exchange for rent to service oh. both of them. She's. Um, <laughs> Did you see him? <laughs> so when she She's approached like, oh, me on the second, <laughs> it made me realize that she we has been appointed trouble. now the head of the house. I was literally just making it up to, to use my thruple clip. I'm not kidding. And that's what, and that's right. We're headed right down thruple, thruple lane for real. So while Steve Rainey is away because they had this secret arrangement. So what are you basing this on? Um, I'm basing this on the fact that I, I actually witnessed, overheard some of the conversations and some of the sexual acts. Between who? The weeks. Between uh, Miss Dick. Come on, you got to say you partook to complete the thruple. Esther and um, at least Rainey. And Rainey told me that, yeah, she was a security guard at um, Mr. Chandler's employer. And he works for one of the DeKalb County agencies. I don't have a clue which one. <laughs> but she was at one point a part time security guard, and that's how they knew each other. So he referred her. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> so the are, evening I when that, she's moving in. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the the twentieth. I'm sorry, the second of June when her first official day. I, I want to take this moment to give uh, Natalie D a big shout out. Everybody, go over there, like and subscribe. I saw she had some technical difficulties earlier, but uh, she's come through again. Th this clip is better than I anticipated. In the house. She ranted for seven minutes talking about what she was going to do to my old B.A. And um, I stayed in my room because <laughs> I, then, I then became very afraid. And then I heard her on the phone uh, with Steve Rainey and he was trying to calm her down. And there's also a text message that I sent over in one of the uh, pieces of evidence of Rainey that texted me saying, please answer the phone. I'm trying to stop that girl from beating your ass. And uh, I had blocked him a couple of days before because he was bothering me too much about, don't worry about going to work, stay there and give that girl that key. It was very, very important for her to have, more important for her to have that key, a stranger, than for me to go out and earn money to pay my rent and have groceries. All right, so I stayed in my room about. Uh, some I I okay. I don't have any facts. We'll see it play out. But she just sounds jealous. So I don't have anything pointing to it, but it just makes me think she's she is not light. She, she sounds jealous of this woman, and that's usually over a guy. Just saying. Two hours passed, and I thought, hmm, probably won't be able to sleep tonight because a strange another stranger in the house. But I stayed in my room. Um, I went to the restroom, Your Honor, and I was literally, too much information, but I was literally sitting on the toilet. The bathroom that Steve Rainey forced us to share is a Jack and Jill bath, so it's a door to her bedroom and a door to mine. She just burst in the door forcefully with this large uh, glass container of, um, 
of an alcoholic beverage. I'm guessing it was a margarita, a daiquiri, something like that. It was red. And she threw it at me, hit me upside the head. It saturated my wig. And yeah, when uh, you say it can. <laughs> like uh wait i was not i simply was not prepared for she saturated my wig (laughs) i i could have gotten through she snatched the weave but she saturated my wig i was not prepared for i have to admit it it was okay (laughs) got it carry on and that covered um the white linen shirt that i was wearing that day and i had it for evidence but um we'll get to that later um, so I, I, I thought, wow. Um, and then she told me, she said, uh, I'm gonna beat your old ass every day until you leave. That's exactly what she told me. And I'm like, oh my God, did this really just happen? I called the police. And then, uh, the next morning, Steve Rainey arrived home like he always does. He leaves on Monday morning, typically, and he comes back Saturday morning. It, it might have to come out. And, um, he came in and I had came, I snuck down to breakfast before she got up to get just a coffee and toast. And he, um, came into the kitchen and said, and that's exhibit number two. It's about a, a one, a, trying to go on memory. It's about a 30 minute conversation, but he starts off yonder saying, so what are you going to do? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, you're going to move, you're going to stay, you're going to go, what what you going to do? And I'm like, um, I wasn't planning on going anywhere, but if, if you want me to go, since, you know, thinking to myself, since Miss Dexter said, I'm going to beat your ass. I'm fine squatting right here. Thank you very much. Until you go, then, um, I'll start looking for a place. He says, well, how long are you going to need? I'm, I'm like, well, at least 30 days. I mean, that's standard. And it takes a while to find a safe, clean place. And he starts a uh, rant. He says that it, it turns, he goes on and on. Again, it's a long conversation. He starts accusing me of not paying rent, which is a lie. He demands rent in cash most of the time because he doesn't want to report it to the IRS's earnings. And then he says, um, I, get, I, I proposed 30 days. He said, no, 30 days. He said 15 days. And I so said, when okay. this was like the day after she threw the drink on you. Yes, sir. It's like my friend of almost two years just changed on me overnight. That's when I knew that it was something up with these relationships. So that was June 3rd, about June, six weeks ago. Yes, sir. June the right. 3rd. And what's happened between these two people and you since okay. then? Since then, uh, Miss Dexter on, um, I'm going off a of memory, just random memory now. The next major thing was she assisted Steve Rainey while I was at work. No, on the 9th, I came in from work um, and I parked in the garage next to Steve Rainey's car, my assigned parking spot. She and Steve Rainey were sitting at the breakfast table with three guns displayed. And my my heart just dropped in the middle of my stomach because I'm thinking, oh my God. And I couldn't even think to run or say nothing. I just kept walking past them and went upstairs to my room and locked the door. But they had a nine millimeter, an assault, like a, a assault rifle, rifle, I don't know what you call them, and then something like a sawed off shotgun or miniature machine gun. And I went in the room and um, just stayed. The next uh, couple of days, on the 13th, I came in from work and um, Mr. Chandler was sitting in his truck uh, in the driveway and uh, initially would not let me even pull in the driveway. And so I toot my horn and after about two minutes, he pulls up so that I can drive in and get into my garage, no, to get into the garage space. But to my surprise, my um, garage door opener wasn't opening because they had changed the locks and disconnected the power to the um, garage door opener. So Chandler then pulled his car, his truck right in front of me. 
It's almost like they don't want her there anymore. It's just the, sort of the feeling I'm getting. Me and just stared at me, mocking me as I struggled to try to get in, figure out a way to get in the house. Then finally he drove off. I asked him, could you please just let me in? He drove off. Then Steve Rainey texts me and said, there's a key in the mailbox with everything you need on it. He and Yvonne Dexter had packed up all my things and moved them to a storage unit. And I sent that over as well as evidence or an exhibit, a storage unit in Morrow close to my new job. Um, all right, hang on, because you said something about an exhibit. Let me see, Miss Broom, are you able to screen share whatever? Uh, I see some exhibits, but they're not <laughs> what she's different ones. Yeah. And I guess one of the challenges here is we got like four cases that they might be under. So um, it's going to be um, with the, the exhibit one is a voice recording of Yvonne Dexter rant on the first day because I didn't come downstairs with the key fast enough. And see, I see a voice recording, but it's showing that it was um, too long. Well, there was one that was sent in um, by um, um, the Women's um, Center um, when the case was filed and in the right format. Nobody said it wasn't um, legible or accessible. And then it was sent in again yesterday through the Women's Center um, in the right format. So you should. So it was have... sent in yesterday. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It would have came from. Um, yeah, women's resource, domestic violence, Asher. All right. So while we're checking on those things, let's carry on with the testimony. So you have the issue where you say they're they're basically trying to remove you from the property and direct you elsewhere. So were you able to go to the storage locker and find belongings? I did go there and find belongings, but not all of my belongings. Um, they just threw my stuff in garbage bags and threw it in this um, small storage space. And when I was rumbling through, even to just try to find my primary work clothes, um, corporate casual kind of thing, um, I noticed that, you know, a lot of my clothing and shoes were not there. And um, anyway, I'm... Um, Finally had a conversation over the next couple of days with Mr. Rainey and he apologized and then he was retracting saying, you know, I don't know what came over me. And um, I told them if anybody, go if anybody goes, it's going to be them and not you. Um, all right. So that was the 13th. The guns on the 9th, the, uh, moving my stuff to storage unit on the 13th. And then it's been like, oh boy, it's been like at least um, four different physical assaults by Miss uh, Dexter. I mean, she's held true to her promise on June the second that I'm going to beat your old ass every day until you go. I mean, she'll. she'll so, what come was the last incident that took place between you two? Um, last night, the major one was this uh, past uh, Saturday morning. She was mad because she called the DeKalb police to try to have me serve with this retaliation TPO that she served against me for filing one on her and having her removed from the house. Um, so she called them and they came and they explained that, well, it's nothing they can do. And, uh, they just have to, you know, sit there and um, make sure I don't run away until the sheriff comes. Well, the sheriff didn't come because um, I honestly believe they know that it's a bogus um, TPO. That's not up to them. That has no control over how they act. I can tell you that right now. Oh, okay. So because they if, if there's an order from the court, it's their job to enforce it. No ifs, ands, or buts. So whatever happened, happened. But I can promise you it wasn't for that. They may have been so, they may have been extremely busy. Uh, or I know that the law enforcement is short staff nationwide. So for whatever reason, they did not come. She got upset. And uh, I was uh, the, the while the law enforcement was there, I was making my coffee as I normally do. And um, 
when they left, she came in and started brushing up against me at the stove, uh, cooking my eggs. And I reminded her that, you know, you can't just take people's groceries. And she started pushing and shoving then. And she took my, um, my coffee that I had just fixed, threw the coffee on me, and took my coffee mug, smashed it in the floor. And then um, as I went um, uh, over to get my phone to call the police, she just started grabbing phones, spam, in the floor, bam busted up both of my phones, the one with what I would use uh, to uh, do all the voice recordings on, um, and then my uh, primary phone for conversations and work and what have you. She destroyed both of them. And they are, uh, pictures of those are in exhibit um, number, is this number two? That were sent over yesterday as well. All right, give us a moment to see if we can pull that up. Along with that, um, and I know that, you know, these things don't, um, other cases don't have anything to do with this case, but other cases tell about character. On, no, we're uh, not doing that. Okay. It's it, that kind of character evidence. We're not going to. I have to decide what happened between y'all, and, and I don't believe yes, whatever yes. other interpersonal issues exist between either of these people and anyone else. Um, it's just not instructive in unpacking this, in my opinion. Um, and so, um, all right. So, Madam Clerk, we'll, do we have the exhibit she's referencing this time? Now, this one is a picture of a car. Exhibit two, would that be a picture of a car? Like the inside of a car? No, ma'am. This is going to be um, exhibit two. It was sent over on Monday, yesterday at 12.42 p.m. by um, Asher. And what is it a picture of? Wait a minute. Um, cell phone. Two cell phones side by side on a brown tabletop. And then some pages of... Um, a legal document, which um, the judge just said, I can't present that second piece, but it's photos of my two phones smashed. I'll look for the judge. She said it was sent over by the women resource. I'll check it. And it, yes, it's a lot. It's a lot of um, pieces of evidence. I tried to be very thorough. Judge, I have a camera with one with a cell phone. All right. We, uh, We'll keep moving. We'll circle back on exhibits if we need to, and we can check I can in with send her my ones. email. I can send her my email in the chat if she wants to send it to me directly. So I can do that. All right. So let's do this for now. Uh, Ms. Pates, are there any other incidents that we have not discussed that involve Ms. Dexter or Mr. Chandler? Oh, yes. With them, um, I'm trying to stay focused on one at a time. Um, Mr. Chandler, um, again, um, he, he tried to flirt with me the week that he moved in and I very graciously declined the offer. And it was like, um, there was, there was, and I hate, God, I hate this, I hate this, Dick pussy, dick pussy, dick pussy, dick pussy, going back and forth between texts with one another, and I never want to hear it again. Uh, with him in the house moving forward, but he initially became violent with me um, on the 23rd um, of June when the sheriff called me to coordinate the service of the TPO on Miss Dexter to have her removed from the house. I came into the garage and um, he rushed, he was standing in the uh, kitchen window that's open to the garage. Well, in his defense, he did try to remove his side piece. I mean, honestly, that that's gonna cause friction. He rushed to the door and um, just stood there with a, a crazy stare. Then he went back to the window. I was afraid to get out of the car because I'm thinking, dang, yeah, cool. she left and the sheriff has left. So they are going to tell him when they'll be back. 
to serve her and he can do what he's oh, can do whatever he wants to me so i sat in my car for a minute and at that time he just stood in the window blowing kisses at me mocking me and then when i came in the house he spoke very loudly in his beautiful accent the, how was your day gail how was your day how's your new job gail how's your new job and i just kept walking and went on up to my, my bedroom and stayed the remainder of the evening and um Miss Dexter returned again that returned that night around 10 30 or 11. So I, I um, thank you, contacted the sheriff and let them know that she was there. Um, they didn't come until the morning of the 24th, where she was officially served and escorted out. Emily, don't make me quibble about his rotation with you, okay? Um, she, she was driving a car that she had just purchased without a license. And um, she was afraid to put her stuff in there. So she called Mr. Chandler and he came to help her out. Um, and he loaded her stuff into his um, Dodge Ram pickup truck and took her wherever she needed to go. However, um, he came back to the house around one o'clock and he was in the kitchen downstairs just slamming the kitchen cabinets like he was having a, a meltdown and cursing and saying all the things he was going to do to me i'm an old b he was going to uh, beat my old ass she didn't deserve that and uh, oh, this, that, the other the other hacker. thank you i stayed in the room but then it got so um bad i thought hmm he just might act on his um on his threats so and he had done this he had I'm having flashbacks he had done this a couple of times before too um when she would jump on me and i'd call the police he would um run up and uh try to force his way in my door um and get me off the phone calling the police and um each time the police uh, would start to come he'd leave but on this particular day the 24th he stayed and ranted and ranted, and then they came and they talked to him. And after they left, then he and Steve Rainey went into Miss Dexter's room after the sheriff had told us, you know, don't go in there because she left her stuff a certain way. She dad should have the right to come back and find it the way she left it. And I understood that. They went in there fumbling around, rumbling like they were looking for something. And then they went into the garage. Um, and I heard them fumbling around even more. But I just stayed in my room. Um, so the next morning when I did finally go. Well, yeah, I'm not sure because I've, I've only seen like a couple minutes of it. But I, th I think she's the squatter. I think she's not paying anything. So that's why she's fighting for her turf. She's got a free place to stay. Go down to the garage after listening to live streaming service. I was going to Walmart to get groceries until the trails walk and clear my head. I know that's when I noticed the puddle of water and those are exhibit pictures. Let's see if I can find those. I noticed a strange puddle of water at the rear of my car. And the first thought is dang, they were out there in the garage on the 23rd um, after I called the uh, police and then they were out there in the garage on the morning of the 24th. Oh, the morning of the 24th, um, no, the 25th, that Sunday, before discovering the puddle of water, um, Mr. Chandler was having another meltdown. I had gone down to fix coffee, and he had a pot of old chicken grease sitting on the stove, um, and I was afraid that my elbow was going to knock it over while I was fixing coffee in my little Keurig. So I just moved the grease from one eye to the other. When I came back up to the room, enjoying my coffee, he was in a cursing fit and slamming cabinet doors again. Stop effing with my shit. I'm gonna kill this. Bitch. Then he got, he after ranting like that for several minutes, he got on the phone with Steve Rainey, uh, telling him the same thing. I'm gonna do this, that, and I'm gonna kill this old B messing with my stuff. And, and, and so I thought, hmm. He was stomping around. He's coming up here again. And, you know, so I called the police. And I was recording him. So I played the recording for the police. 
and um, they um, counseled him on, you know, you know, why did he make a false report and explain to him that, that, hey, she was recording you and what you're saying ain't adding up. So that made what was, him. What falsity did he report? He said that I was that I had messed with his food and his groceries that he had on the stove and they could see that it was just a pot of um, chicken grease where he had fried chicken or pork chops the day before and left it on the stove top. Oh. And I admitted to them, sir, that I, I, I slid it from the one eye over because my elbow, the counter space was so small. I didn't want to mop up grease and I admitted that to them. But he tried to make it sound like I just came down there and I don't know, destroyed his his whole um, his whole meal or something. With while acknowledging the possibility that some of the things that he might be saying, if corroborated, and I know there are questions about recordings and whatnot, this is a meandering path to whatever we're supposed to be getting toward today. It what sure is, is the significance of the water in the garage? Okay. So after the police came and heard that, I went out to my car just to get out of the house because I hadn't been out in two days. And that's when I noticed the water at the, a puddle of water at the back of my car. And I thought, oh my God, I hope they didn't put water in my gas tank. So I made it two miles from the house to Anvil Block Road into Walmart. Big when I came out of Walmart, my car, which was running like a brand new sewing machine, um, was fidgety to start. And then when it did start, it was sputtering a little bit. So I thought, hmm, they probably did put water in it. And I went a, a half mile up to Kroger to try to top it off with some premium gas, thinking maybe that'll at least let me go four or five miles and find an emergency mechanic. And I didn't make it that far. The car shut off within another mile and um, I had it towed. I flagged down the tow truck. It was just the grace of God. He was like right there um, where I pulled off at the side of the road and I flagged him down. He towed me back to the house um, for an $80 discount and put the car right back in the garage where it always was. And then I called my mechanic from Mableton, Georgia um, to come and check it and uh, repair it because I was just thinking, okay, it's just water. And when the mechanic came, um, he pumped out the fuel and um, the fuel tank and those photos are sent in there and exhibits to each of the cases for uh, both Chandler and Randy. <laughs> um, he shined his light up in there to show me these big clumps of sugar and another white substance in the bottom of the fuel tank. And um, he sponged all of that out and um, replaced the fuel pump. And then uh, he verified that it was sugar in the photographs. You can see the crystallized sugar all inside the actual oh. fuel pump. We and then that, Judge, would you like for me to show that? Yes, if we if we have that one. Okay. And then when he added the new fuel in after installing a brand new fuel pump and dry cleaning the actual fuel tank, um, he did warn that the um, other there still could be sugar in the lines because you drove a couple of miles. So don't be surprised if I have to come back and do the fuel injectors. So how and do you know that he was the one that was responsible for this? Because that Friday evening when I came into the kitchen, um, I had my, um, after he was upset with me because Yvonne Dexter was about to be removed. The sheriff had just came and left and she had left. He had a brand new tube of caulking right beside him. And that's the other piece of the, of the car story. And that video is no longer available because that video was on the phone that Miss Dexter destroyed this past Saturday with a whole lot of other videos and voice recordings. 
Um, however, he had that caulking. He had a brand new tuba caulking just sitting beside him when he was mocking me. And then the time that I witnessed him and Rainey in the garage, both on the 24th and the morning of the 25th, both times right after I had to call law enforcement um, to get them to stop, get him to stop, real him to stop <laughs> ranting about all the harm he was going to do to me, <laughs> kill me, make me come up missing and all this, that and the other. The, and the lack in addition to the to the sugar in the tank and it it like it had to be five pounds or more it was so much and um when the when the mechanic put like four gallons of premium back in there and we started it up we immediately smelled well it took him forever to get it in because they took that caulking the little tubes like what you use to do fine caulking around a shower or tub they took all right. That all of out. this, all of this can be boiled down to your car was damaged. We we have been going for so long, and we haven't even gotten to the part where the first person asks you their first question, much less the part where they get to give their own testimony about these stories. So you, the the painstaking detail with which you are spelling these things out is not really helpful in this setting in terms of determining what what the rulings that I'm tasked with making. If we were in a civil suit where we were trying to figure out the exact dollar amount of the damages, some of these things would, would bear a little differently. So right now I'm going to shift us in a different direction. What we're going to do, uh, Mr. Chandler, your case is first on the calendar. Uh, and what we've been talking about most recently has pertained to you understanding you're going to have a chance to give your own testimony. Um, You've had a chance to see those pictures that were shared. Do you have any questions you wish to ask uh, Ms. Pates or any objections to the admissibility of those pictures for whatever weight the court gives them when we're done? I think you'll have to click to unmute. Yes, sir. All right. Um, so do you have any questions for this witness? Any objections to the admission of those pictures into evidence? Yes, sir. All right. What questions would you like to ask Ms. Pates? Did Ms. Stitt ever saw me on her car? No, she said she saw, saw you with the other items. No, the car came as far. I, I regrout the bathroom. My bathroom downstairs, I regrout my bathroom. So I caught around the tub. That's what the carking was for. Okay, that's a statement, the, not a question. Do you have a question for this witness? Did she see me around her car? I, I don't know nothing about her car. All right, have you seen him near the car? Yes, sir. Both times when I heard him when I heard the noise in the garage, because nobody would ever spend any time in the garage, um, I would come, I came downstairs and the kitchen window overlooks the garage, looks right out into it. That's when I saw both he and um, Steve Rainey in the garage. But they were just standing between the cars, my Mercedes and Rainey's Jaguar, um, like they were having a conversation when they saw me in the window. Okay, so she's given that example of an instance where you were okay. near the vehicle. Do you okay. have other questions? Okay, you, you heard what she just said, my honor. She saw me and Rainey in the facility of her car. So she did not see me, nor she did not see Mr. Rainey tampering with her car because it never happened. That's argument, not a question. Do you have other questions for this witness? No. Okay. Uh, it, it is a fine tightrope to walk between hoping that things are going the place you need them to go, and sometimes you have to just take the wheel and get them there. Uh, and th we have crossed over into the latter situation because I have a number of other hearings that we are going to conduct this afternoon, and there are going to be a whole lot of people ordering DoorDash for dinner is where we're at right now. So, all right, Miss Dexter, this is the time for questions and only questions, the time for testimony. Time for testimony. I'm Echo. I'm Echo. Do you have questions yeah. for Ms. Pence? I just want to ask one question. If I um, did anything physically to her, why was I not arrested? She said that I physically hit her in the head 
She said oh, she caught let me, a bullet. Let me ask. Okay. So did you have any visible injuries from those incidents, Ms. Pates? No, sir. And that's that except for this Saturday. This Saturday was the first time that I had a visible incident where she punched me, and she's done that several times, just punched me and snatched my wig off. She's made a um I out of just running into my room and snatch my I, I knew there'd be a wig snatching before this was over i knew it wig off it's funny to her and <laughs> punch right, me so in the, the face did not so she any injuries and didn't make an arrest is they that did. The 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 question is that the correct answer to the question miss pates that is correct they took they took pictures but they did not make an arrest then okay, they so took they, me to the then they took me to the T-Mobile store to get a backup phone because she had smashed both of my phones just prior to okay. punching me. Please. And did they give give you any information regarding the next steps you were supposed to take? Yes, sir. They advised me to go and um, pursue a warrant, which I had applied for a criminal warrant shortly after June the second. The second with the first uh, physical assault, I applied online through the DeKalb County Courts. Then, and I was told that since I didn't have a, they kept, they called me at work and said, do you have a social security number? I'm like, who that's being a, uh, accused of a crime is gonna give you their social security number to have them prosecuted? Yeah, that civilian warrant process is complicated to navigate. That doesn't, that's not surprising to me as someone who handles some of those issues uh -huh. uh, that you ran into that roadblock. It's a process that doesn't exist in most other states, but all right. Uh, and then, sir, and then, sir, on Mr. Chandler, I've been working with the DeKalb County Sheriff's Unit on domestic violence to pursue um, a warrant um, for the um, uh, physical assault of him uh, trying to bust the force his way into my room, amongst other things. And that mm -hmm. um, the first investigator was on vacation. And um, someone called Ms. me in the street. Do you have any other questions for Ms. Pates? I do not, sir. All uh -huh. right, very good. So, Mr. Stephen, uh, Mr. Chandler, excuse me, uh, yes, you're uh, you were on first as our uh, as yes, our sir. first listed respondent. We'll give you the opportunity to testify if you wish to testify. You've already been sworn in and are under oath. Would you like to testify in this matter? Yes, sir. What would you like to tell us? She's crazy. Come on. When I moved into that place, into that house, me and Miss Gill, we used to get along. Miss Gill started saying that I bring in women in and out of the house. I don't have no little kids that I have to take care of. I come, I work, I come home, I bed. By eight o'clock, I gone. I hardly sleep there. I come back about six o'clock, get ready for work and come to work. I try to ask Gail what was the problem with me and her. I said, Gail, let's talk about this. What's the problem? I never did you anything. Oh, I don't want to talk to fat boys. No fat boy. That was it. I leave it as that. <laughs> This just keeps she getting called better. the police, tell the police <laughs> I threatened her. I never had no conflict with the woman. So I was trying to figure out what's going on between me and her. She never tell me what's going on between me and her. I witnessed, she, I was sleeping one night and I heard a commotion upstairs. I got up and I went up there. Yep. Yes, I did went up there. I don't know what was going on up there. I said, hey, I said, Ava, open this door, open this door. Ava opened the door. I saw Gail took up an iron, an iron that you iron clothes and throw it at Eva and it barely missed her head. I called the police. Then she said, she said one day, she said, how she can burn the house down. We got to sleep with one eye open. And I didn't know where all of that was coming from because me and that woman never had no conflict. 
and she caught me totally off guard. I don't know what happened. And with her car, I don't know nothing about her car. I really don't. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Okay, and you describe an incident where she made another threat to you or she had a weapon. Was that around the same time? Yes. She, she had a, um, it was like, it was a, a, like, a, like a butter knife. I think it was a butter knife. And she said that she was going to stab me with it. And so I looked at her and I said, you better get away from me, woman. You better get away from me. That's what I told her. And then I called my girlfriend and I said, yo, this bitch over here is acting crazy. And my girlfriend said to me, just put on your clothes and come on over here. And that's what I did. Oh, that, that's a short right there. Yeah, I, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, that's going up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ms. Pates, do you have any questions that you think need to be asked to Mr. Chandler right now? You'll have to click to unmute for me. Yes. Mr. Chandler, um, oh, here we go. Here what we were go. you doing in the garage for about an hour on the morning of the 24th after Miss Dexter was removed from the house? And again on Sunday morning after the police left um, <laughs> with uh, Mr. Rainey. I was not in that garage when the police removed. Miss Dexter, Miss Dexter called me to get her from there and the sheriff department was still there and the sheriff department said to me, thank you very much, sir. And I put her inside my car, inside my truck and we left. Now, the Sunday, was, what were you doing for that time in the garage? Now the sun, now the Sunday, when, when me and Mr. Rennie was in the garage, Miss something, some the, the computer on Mr. Rainey's car is not good. So, and his car won't start. He was so doing is the answer to this question you were doing something for Mr. Rainey's car? No, me and Mr. Rainey was inside the garage looking at his car. So he was using some of my tools because so his car is, have a yes. Yes, it was me you and Mr. Were Rainey. On in Mr. The Rainey's garage. car. Her question is what yeah, were you was, doing in the garage? And your answer is working on mr rainey's car what's yes. your next question yeah, mr. <laughs> my next You're question is um <laughs> on one occasion um mr chandler you you shared you were i don't know just transparent for no reason and shared with me that you um were um illiterate um lacking the ability to read and write well and you were really grateful for your government job um, and then I look at your um, the TPO that you filed, and it's a mirror of the original TPO that Miss Dexter tried to file on the 27th after she was removed from the home. It's in handwriting. Is that your writing, sir? Listen to me. My words to you was, I'm the only illiterate man that have a government job. That is what I say. To <laughs> Answer you. the question. This is this is. <laughs> so ridiculous <laughs> whose handwriting is on the paper i don't know how did i it don't know <laughs> i did that paperwork i did that oh, you clarified which i'm the only illiterate man to have a government job <laughs> i don't know have you seen our government I, I i think i think you have a lot of company there my friend i did that so this is your handwriting Yes. I'm looking at on your petition. On, on my PTO is my handwriting. I don't know nothing about Miss Dexter's uh, PTO or nothing. All, All right. right. Madam, Clark, can you pull that up and screen share it for me? The petition for 5964. What page would you like, Judge? Thank you, Miss George. First, first one will be fine. Okay. Now, Mr. Mr. Pates. I mean no disrespect with this question, but I do want to make sure I understand what's going on. Sometimes people make comments that they don't mean or as a joke. 
other other times you know they say things so this is the petition we have so before we get into what she's asking i guess the question is is this your handwriting yes yes okay so you filled this petition out and then you did what with it i i um i think i email it uh email it back to the, um down to the website that they told me to yes that's my yes so did you send it to the so you wrote it by hand scanned it and emailed it yes yes sir okay, i wrote it I, I i wrote it out by hand and then i give it to my girlfriend she took it to her job and she scanned it and sent it back so that you would have the electronic copy to to email yes, him yes yes okay and so all right miss pates what's your next question um your honor is it possible to um get a just a quick uh sample writing from uh, no Mr. what's next <laughs> no okay um oh i'd like to point out that mr chandler this uh TPO initial filing, which is stamped across the top of most of the pages, but definitely pages 8, um, 13, and 14 is, as I stated earlier, filed on 627, 2023 at 10 a.m. And then you're. No, you may not. Well, TPO wasn't filed until the 5th of uh, July. Um, after you had been uh, removed from the home so what my my direct question is why is there um a lapse of almost 30 days from the filing sorry what where what almost 30 days are you referencing here well the um tpo has a, a date stamp across the top of it. If you see page eight, it's got two numbers on it, page eight and 12 on page eight, uh, page 13 and 14, or page eight, one and two. Are you looking at an order or a petition? Um, I'm looking at the petition, sir. The file okay, and it's the same handwritten one that was just screen shared? Yes, sir. And it was initially filed on 627-23, which was the red flag that made me believe that it was the uh, petition that was um, uh, initially filed by Ms. Dexter and wasn't processed. And then Mr. Then the actual date that Mr. Chandler filed isn't until July the 5th after he was his file date is the 5th of July for this. Where, where are you basing that on? It's printed on the copy of the documents that I have. 23PO 05964. I'm just going to tell you, I think that's the date that they were print, that they were literally printed. It's not the date that, that, they, that anything was done. That's the date it was printed <laughs> off the computer to bring to you. Yes, it did. Oh, just, okay. I was served on the 5th. Yes, sir. So th that would match up if somebody, the sheriff, if they printed those documents on the 5th, they could have brought them to you on the 5th. That's why they're dated the 5th. What's your next question? Okay. Um, <laughs> that's really all I have for Mr. Jim. All right. Uh, Ms. Dexter, do you have any questions for Mr. Chandler? I just want to ask him, did I previously know you before June 1st? I've never met him ever in my life. So no, ma'am. Well, I'm, I'm asking him. I'm sorry. No, ma'am. I, I, I didn't know you. No, ma'am. Thank you. That's all I have, Judge. When I, when I, when I, my honor, when I met her, that is when I found out that she works for the county too. Since then, I never know her before then. Okay. All right. So 
Mr. Chandler, I think that's all the questions we have for you. Ms. Dexter, this is your opportunity to provide your testimony. You've been sworn in and are under oath. What would you like to tell us today? Oh, goody. Let's hear it. Well, my testimony is I feel that this lady, Ms. Pates, is mentally disturbed. <laughs> um, she is delusional. She she just do all types of stuff Join in the me. house. Like like Steve told you, she threw an iron at my head one time when I wasn't looking. We did get into a confrontation because she's mad that I shared the bathroom with her. But it's not her house. You know, she got an eviction. She's mad that she got an eviction and the guy wants her to get out the house. To be fair, she's mad that you uh, saturated and snatched her weave. I mean, that's all I'm saying. House Because she's not paying rent and she's squatting. And he, he brought other people in to... to, to to pay the rent and she's not paying the rent so she's mad that you know i guess her and mr rainey had some type of relationship i don't know but he's the 60 year old man i've never had any type of sexual dealings with him no type of it's, it is nothing like that i did find the ad on craigslist i responded to the ad nothing of a sexual nature i assure you I moved in on June 1st. She's correct. She was supposed to leave a key under the mat because she had to go to work. She did not leave the key. So I called Mr. Rainey. Mr. Chandler came out of work and came to let me inside of the residence. When she got home, um, she, I asked, she told me that she's going to give me the key. I told her that's fine. Mr. Rainey gave, uh, Mr. Chandler gave me a key. I'm going to make my, I'm going to go and make my own key. So at that point in time, she was upset. She got mad and said, somebody trying to, whatever. That, that made us strange that, that day. That made us not, I mean, I guess she got an attitude about that. I don't know why she got this big thing that something's going on between Nothing ever has been going on, but okay. So move forward. <clears throat> She's just been doing erratic things in the house. She'll turn on all of the lights and leave the lights on all day. Aww. She'll um. Thank you. Turn on all the water. So Mr. Rainey just wanted her out of the house, you know. So I, like I said, I don't be here like that. I I just go and mind my business. I'm a I'm a you know I'm just a regular tenant. But as far as her and her erratic behavior it i fear for my life because she does stuff at night where it's, it's scary you know she told everybody she was going to burn the house down like he like mr Rain, uh mr chandler said and to sleep with one eye open um she just do she she put the glue all over the locks so we only have one door to enter uh we can't we can't get in and out of the house it's only one door and that's the door to the garage and the only reason she didn't glue that door is because she has the only garage key and mr rainey which is the homeowner has the um the garage the garage key so he then gave me the garage key so i can get in and out of the home she did put a pto on me but they dismissed it because it was First, I left when when they served me. They told me I had to leave the home. I left. The PTO was up July 9th, but I didn't come back. I didn't come back until we went to court. When we went to court, they dismissed the charges, and then that's when I returned back to the home. But and that like was a I, procedural dismissal. You didn't have an evidentiary hearing with testimony, correct? Correct. And I've never even talked to the judge before they even issued the PTO. That's why I'm like, I don't know well, that's why. That's how that process works. That's how it works for oh. everybody. It's the same reason that you talk to a judge right. to get yourself here without them there. So, all right. right. So, you were, what else did you wish to tell us? I just wish to tell you that I fear for my life. She does, she does crazy things at nighttime. And I, I'll be scared to sleep sometime. But this is where I live. And she, I pay rent here. I pay three months rent. She don't, she, she doesn't pay any rent. She doesn't, she, she doesn't live here. She put a PTO on Mr. Rainey, which is the person that um actually um owns the property. She put a PTO on him because he 
gave her eviction papers. At first, he just told her, you know, go ahead and leave. He didn't really, you know, he told her to get some time for her to go, just go ahead and leave. But she wouldn't leave. So now he actually filed for eviction to get her out of here. And now that she's know that she's leaving, she just she just do stuff. She just do crazy things. She wait till people go to sleep and she does crazy things. And like I said, I paid to live here and then I had to pay for a hotel for two to three weeks uh, because of this incident. And this this and she's I think she needs to be mentally evaluated. Those all everything she said was lies. I've never touched this lady. I think she broke her own phones. I've, I've, I've never put, uh, you know, who knows? She, she strikes me as the most credible of the group. Uh, that's just the way I see it. Not perfect, but, but far and away the most credible of this group. My hands on this 60 year old lady. I've never put my hands on her. I never punched her in the face. I never told her I'm a beater. I, we got into a verbal argument, of course, but I've never put my hands on her. So I just, I just, like I said, I think that the PTO, um, TPO is valid because she's the, she's the actual aggressor. She talks very nice and sweet, but she's really a demon. She, she really does stuff that is outrageous. And I just want. To she talks really nice and sweet, but she's really a demon. <laughs> this hearing just keeps getting better. The court to recognize that. I don't know what evidence she has, but it's false evidence. I've never put my hands on her. She the one actually um, hurt me. She threw an iron at my head. She she gets crazy and erratic, and she just she just go crazy. I, I don't know what's wrong with her, but I've never put my hands on her. And that, that's my testimony. I'm ready to go. Sorry. All right, Ms. Pates, do you have any questions for this witness? Um, yes, because I missed this one on Chandler and I should have asked him as well, but um, Ms. Dexter, um, when you say that, when you make the accusation that I um, said I was going to burn down the house with everyone in it, um, I noticed that that's only on uh, Mr. Chandler's um, application for TPO. Do you have any uh, proof or any police report that I made such threats? No, I didn't Specifically that I was going to burn down the house while everyone was keeping it. Police reports are not evidence for these I purposes. Heard the evidence is testimony. I've never called the police. We just heard you say it out of your mouth. We were, what do you, you no, I don't have right. any evidence. I've, that's okay, a, you that's enough of an answer, Ms. Dexter. Ms. Pates, right. do you have any other questions? Um, I do, I do, I do. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Easy. On I'll your um, TPO, uh, Ms. Dexter, um, that you filed, what dates um, did the uh, allegations actually take place? Because I'm, I'm noticing that again, that your um, TPO was not filed until three or four days after you had been removed um, under the TPO I filed you. I filed on you. For one month. It's been June. It was in June. If it's true that this, this woman is not paying rent and filed for a TPO on the owner of the house, that's all I need to know, that she's a full grifting uh, scumbag squatter that that i don't know that that information is true but that's what they're saying if that is in fact the case that's outrageous all right we're gonna we're gonna reframe this question did you file okay. your tpo after the sheriff removed you from the house i did okay uh, that's uh, i don't know how many questions it was going to take to get to that but i think that's okay. where that's going miss pates what is your next question um, just the allegations on that TPO. I mean, typically, if, if something happened to me, I'd say it happened on the June the 2nd, June the 9th, and June the 13th. Are there any specific dates? Why aren't there dates on the allegations? Where, this isn't okay. I'm, are you right? I'm in the weeds. I'm sorry, sir. I'm in the weeds. What's your next question? <laughs> um, here's a key one. 
Um, you stated several times, uh, Miss Dexter, that Mister. I got a real humdinger coming up. I, I want I want to preface my question with how good my question is. Sir <laughs> Stephen Rainey owns the property here at thirty nine twenty seven. Um, how do you know that he owns it? Because I know differently. Irrelevant. Next question. <laughs> That's all I have, sir. Okay, Mr. Chandler, do you have any questions for Miss Dexter? No, sir. All right. I don't want to be rash and make any decisions while I sit here. I have a lot to think over and look over. The three of you will be placed in the waiting room uh, and be brought back in when and if I have an announcement about how we'll be proceeding from here. Sir, can I ask one more question? Did Miss Pate throw an iron at the back of my head? I want to ask for uh, that she's, one. She's not on the witness stand for that. So, no, ma'am. Uh, all parties will be placed in the waiting room. I put that in my PTO. I did put that in there. That she threw an iron. That's why I'm afraid of, of for my life. I put that in the P. I put that in the TPO that she threw an and, iron at me. And you offered testimony to that effect. And she took the stand when she testified and was subject to questioning. The parties are going to be placed in the waiting room. Just and give we me will five minutes. For, I want to go to the restroom. We will go at least. Go we will give you at least five minutes. I can promise you that. So take all the time you need. I know we have been going for two hours here. So uh, absolutely. It'll be at least five and maybe more than that. And we will. Oh, sweet Jesus. What? Okay. I'm going to try to find the, the, this. Hector says he sent it to me. Let me see if I can do this. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it. Hopefully this is the ruling. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, this is going to be half a ruling and half a speech uh, so that I can just sit here and preach at everybody. Uh, here's what I think is going to happen. Uh, there's an eviction case coming to court next week. Or more TPOs coming to court a week after that. Uh, to get started, take um, for what we do. There are ways to hear all. Certainly, to the degree people need to leave the earth. But the process that you're in the court system, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying you're the problem. At the same time, what you're asking me to do, uh, partly, mostly today, but also on that other court date in the future, is to potentially have everybody else put out of this house but you. Um, and it's, it's an unusual situation, to say the least. Uh, the orders that I write on this case are the type of orders that I seldom write, um, but I think it's the best solution that I have, and I think it's an appropriate one under the facts and the law as I believe it to be. Um, I'm not going to remove anybody from the home. I'm not going to evict anyone from the residence, and part of the reason for that is that there's an eviction pending against one of these parties that could be resolved in the next, uh, well, heard in court in the next seven days and then fully resolved, so to speak, in the next 14. My rulings on these cases are going to be as follows. Position 18 on the calendar, 23 PO, 58, 17, Pates versus Chandler. Uh, I will grant the order and tell uh, Mr. Chandler to have no contact with Ms. Pates. That includes verbally or otherwise. That includes communications directed at her um, or even about her, but in her presence in such a way that they can be overheard. Uh, with respect to position 23, Chandler versus Pates, I will deny that order as well as order 23 PO 6041 uh, because I don't believe that those orders are reasonably necessary to prevent uh, future acts of violence. With respect to 23 PO 6448, Pates versus Dexter, I will grant that order. Uh, I will not remove Ms. Dexter or anyone else from the home. I will not require family violence intervention because this is not that type of relationship. Uh, but I'll give you the same instructions I gave Mr. Chandler. Do not have any contact with Ms. Pates verbally, physically, or otherwise. That includes other forms of communication, like electronic communication as well. Ms. Pates, uh, to whatever extent Mr. Rainey is in charge of this property, uh, whether he's the owner, the landlord, or just the person doing someone else's bidding, 
he doesn't seem to want you there. The other roommates don't seem to want you there. There was a conversation about this at least as far back as June 3rd, um, but there's a legal process that accompanies having you removed. Uh, that process is ongoing. Uh, at the same time, what I will gently tell you is this is a hint that you need to take uh, because whether you have a legal right to be there and whether it's in your best interest to be there are often two very different things. And this feels like one of those times. Um, so while you might not be treated kindly or you might not be treated fairly in that house, uh, it sounds like, and it seems like you feel like you would be safer and you would be happier somewhere else. And so I would work very hard to find that somewhere else as soon as possible. And I don't think anybody else would begrudge you that. Um, and that fresh start, my hope is, uh, will serve you well and will put a stop to all the issues between all of you. In the meantime, whichever of my colleagues are dealt the hand that requires addressing next week's case and the week after that's case, um, I wish them luck. Uh, these orders will be on record sometime this week for anyone that should need them. And in the meantime, we are going to place these parties in the breakout, or excuse me, in the waiting room, and they are free to log off. Have a good day. All right, H Hector Cam Clips. Go over, hit like and subscribe, Hector Cam Clips. He bailed, he bailed me out here, and I, I've used his stuff before. He's got a cool channel. All right. Let me go back here. So there you have it. We have the ruling. I said in the beginning we didn't have the ruling, and we didn't at the time, but we got the ruling. It's it's ultimately it's funny. Ultimately she prevailed. So she so they they don't they can't have contact with her. However, none of them want to have contact with her, so that's fine. It's actually going to be helpful to them. Cuz they'll be like whatever. I'm not supposed to have any contact with you. Go away from me. <laughs> but he's not kicking people out of the house and what he's telling her is you got to go. Everybody wants you out. And and he doesn't want to resolve the issue. <clears throat> he doesn't want to resolve. Okay. The other two were, were trying to use the TPO as a substitute for an eviction, effectively. But there's an eviction underway, and it properly should be done as an eviction. And that that's sort of the, the way the judge ruled on it. So, so she sort of ostensibly wins. In the sense that she got she got her she wins but she loses she misses her aim. He he says don't talk to this woman but nobody wants to talk to her. So that that's that's their supposed loss. But what he's not doing is causing them any other problems or making them leave or anything else. And he's anticipating that she's going to be evicted. And he doesn't come out with it, but he but he but he suggests you know. It appears you might be the problem. <laughs> I think this is a you problem. She, you know, they're all a little crazy, but I, I think I think she is definitely the main problem. I, I'm sure. It, I'm sure it goes a lot deeper deeper than uh, even what we saw here. Oh my god! Just listening to her testify. But this this thing had everything. She called it the the one called her a demon. We had a we had a uh, we had a drink uh, throwing. <laughs> we had a, a wig saturation and a weave snatching. <laughs> we had potential throuples. We might we might have we might have a uh, a rent for fun arrangement. We might not. We've got caulking. Yes, we've got caulking. We've got a we've got a guy who wanted to clarify. Uh, <laughs> wanted to clarify um, how how he's how he's the only illiterate guy who works the government. He clarified that he didn't like the way she characterized it, which I, frankly I thought was the only thing was she said about right. <laughs> you can't make this up. You can't make this up. Yeah, the judge losing his mind the whole time. I I do like him. He'd sit there and just let crazy go for a while, and then he would just he would just put his foot down and be like, "No, no, we're not doing this." <laughs> he he let it he let him just slap around for a few minutes, and then be like, "Ah, eh, we're we're done. We're 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 moving on now." Oh, good times. Thank you very much, Natalie D. Of course, all this all this was kicked off. By by our guy by our guy who is always getting railroaded up in Trevor City. <laughs> he 
He really needs to get it together. Good times, good times. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I will see you all soon.